as we dive beneath the waves for a very scary edition of our diving update. I'd like to be under the sea. Some more Beatles for you as we celebrate Sir Paul being in town. Nairi Palmer's here from Sydney Underwater Gazette. Morning, Nairi. Good morning, Dom. Now, you've got a Halloween edition of the Diving Report for us. You're going to fill us in on a fairly terrifying creature. Well, do I have a treat for you. Today, I'll be speaking about a ghostly creature from 500 million years ago that still haunts us today. (laughs) Like zombies, they have no brain and no blood, no eyes, and yet they can think and they can navigate. They float ethereally in the water, but they have an excruciating and deadly sting. And they breathe like the plague, and some are even immortal. They are fortune tellers and bringers of doom, and they can take down whole ecosystems and crash economies. And their numbers around Sydney are increasing. They are jellyfish. Fortune tellers and bringers of doom. Goodness me, that's a lot for a a simple jellyfish to achieve, isn't it? Yes, but not all of them are so ominous. Some jellyfish, like the friendly ghosts that are comb jellies, are quite beautiful, even though they're cannibals. Are they? I didn't know that. (laughs) Yeah, Um, but others can pack quite the sting. Uh, They've got tiny barbs on their tentacles that stab into the skin and inject venom. But the most foreboding is the Arakanji box jellyfish, and the sting is a hundred times more potent than a cobra and a thousand times stronger than a tarantula. And they live in the tropics, but like many species and white walkers, they're moving south <laughs> towards Sydney and citizen science is carefully tracking their migration. Yeah, I remember going up to North Queensland as a child and seeing all the bottles of vinegar on the beach in case people got stung by the Irukandji. I wasn't aware of them until that point. So the, the notion of these things coming further south to our beloved beaches is a troubling thing, Nairi. Let's hope that um, they're slow about it. I guess it's because the ocean's getting warmer. How do blue bottles fit into this? Well, blue bottles are in the same order as jellyfish, hydrozoa. Um, Jellies are one organism, whereas blue bottles are like Frankenstein's monster. They're actually four different um, individuals cobbled into one. So one individual is the sail, another is the stinger, another is the digestive system, and the last is the breeding apparatus. How interesting. So they're actually like a mini ecosystem uh, floating along there. Yeah, that's right. Um, But... Both jellies and blue bottles can cause the closure of multiple beaches and ruin your day. Absolutely. So you mentioned earlier, amongst the many terrifying aspects of jellyfish, uh, the bringers of doom, that they're immortal. How so? Yeah, well, most jellies uh, reproduce sexually with the adults laying eggs. Um, But some species, when they start to die, they disintegrate into cells. And these cells function like eggs. So they grow into individual jellies, but they're genetically identical to the originals. So they're like clones. How extraordinary. I wonder if we could clone Sir Paul McCartney and enjoy his gigs for for hundreds of years to come. That could be quite extraordinary. So in a sense, these these jellyfish, I suppose you could say they found the elixir of youth. Yes. And pharmaceutical companies are really trying to find their secret. And um, given Paul McCartney still looks so good, they're probably (laughs) studying him too. How interesting. Now, what about the bringers of doom side of this, Nari? Mm, So, jellies are like fortune tellers. They're like the crystal balls of the ocean and they can indicate when an ecosystem's out of balance. So, they breed like wildfire when the seas are warmer and oxygen levels are lower and when there's pollution. Um, and other animals can't survive in those conditions. And also their predators like tuna and swordfish, which are tasty, are overfished. So the populations go unchecked. And at the moment in Sydney, conditions are at a tipping point. Right. And um, I mean, jellyfish can do all kinds of things. Can't they understand that they've closed down major infrastructure in various places? Yeah, the, a major problem with them is that they get stuck in intakes for cooling water. And it's caused the shutdown of two nuclear reactors in Scotland. And in Sweden, it stopped the world's largest boiling water nuclear reactor. 
And in the Philippines, um, not long ago, jellies actually caused a blackout that impacted 53 million people. It's scary. How incredible. And yeah, um, so as they come further south, that is quite troubling. Um, mm. Where are we up to with that? I mean, in, in terms of the Irukandji coming that far, uh, do you mm -hmm. think, do you, uh, are they imminent, do you think? Or how many years are we talking? Oh, I wouldn't even know. It's so hard to say because the currents, um, we're at the mercy of the currents. So when I've been doing reef surveys, I've seen species in Jervis Bay that haven't been seen um, south of Queensland before. Uh, it really depends on how the ocean moves, but hopefully <laughs> it won't be soon. Yes, indeed. All right. Well, let's, let's hope so. Now, what's uh, diving like this weekend? What are the conditions? Oh, well, um, the conditions aren't great. The morning, um, this morning it's rough and it's windy. The swell is 2.5 metres with a period of 12 seconds. The visibility will be soupy. Most dives are cancelled today, including mine, so I'll be staying dry again. So I'll be keeping my eye out for jellies from the shore. Okay. Um, and everyone remember to look but don't touch because these critters have some nasty tricks up their sleeves. Yeah, the lion's manes in particular sound like they're well worth steering clear of. Is it? I guess we uh, tend to want to steer clear of sea life in general. Thank you so much for the update, Nari. Thank you and happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Nari Palmer there from the Sydney Underwater Gazette.